In this video I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi Pico to build a ham radio transmitter. It generates single sideband as well as AM, FM and CW and it works from 500kHz up to 30MHz so it covers all ham bands from 160 meters up to 10 meters. Most transmitter designs use an external chip to generate an RF oscillator but in this design we're using the PIO feature of the Pi Pico to generate the oscillator directly. This makes the hardware very simple and helps to keep the cost down. The design is more of a proof of concept than a finished design at the moment. We need an amplifier and some filtering before we can use it on the air. I'll talk more about that later. I built this prototype on a piece of copper clad PCB. There's three outputs from the Pi Pico. The RF oscillator comes from the PIO and we can control the frequency and the phase very precisely using software. But for modes like AM and single sideband we also need to control the amplitude. I'm using the PWM outputs for this to generate an RF envelope. We can mix the RF envelope and the RF oscillator together using a simple analog multiplexer. I've also added a MAX9814 microphone preamplifier module. Um, you can buy these cheaply online and you can feed the output straight into the ADC of the Pico. Uh, but you can also use the USB interface to stream audio from a PC. So let's see how well it works. Um, this is the RF output and you can see that we're getting a nice stable signal at exactly the right frequency. Um, I've turned on the persistence on the scope so you can see that we're getting a jitter of about 8 nanoseconds in either direction and that's one clock cycle at 125 megahertz. So we can see the software is doing a good job of controlling the oscillator and it's always switching within a clock cycle of where it should um, and the jitter is about as good as it can be. PIO and the DMA are doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us. They can play back batches of pre-recorded waveforms without using any CPU. The software needs to plan the start point of each batch so that the waveforms transition smoothly. The software can also modulate the phase of the waveform, which is what we need to generate FM and single sideband. I've used some PIO pins to monitor how much of the CPU is being used to plan the batches. As we can see, the software is using about 10 microseconds to plan each batch every 100 microseconds. So it's using about 10% of the CPU. The software also needs to generate the modulation. Single sideband is the most intensive. It needs to filter out the opposite sideband and also convert from IQ representation to magnitude and phase. I'm using a Cordic algorithm to generate the magnitude and phase. Again, we can see that this is a little over 10 microseconds every 100 microseconds, so a little over 10% of the CPU. So in total, that's less than 30% of the CPU being used on just one core, so there's plenty of headroom. Now let's look at the envelope signal. I'm running the PWM as fast as I can to reduce jitter. At a little over 500 kilohertz, we can still get 8 bits of resolution. The RC filter has a cutoff frequency of around 3 kilohertz, so the attenuation at 500 kilohertz is very strong. Now let's see what this sounds like on a receiver. I'm using a test voice sample and sending it over USB so that I can compare the different modes. A quick round clock. Jump over to the lazy dog. A quick round clock. Jump over to the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over to the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over to the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over to the lazy dog. Quick brown fox jumps over to the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over to the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over to the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over to the lazy dog. Quick brown fox jumps over to the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I've hooked this up to the tiny spectrum analyzer, and as you would expect with a square wave output, we're seeing very strong harmonics at odd multiples of the output frequency. We need to design a filter to remove these before we can use the transmitter on the air, otherwise, we'll cause interference on other bands. Just to demonstrate this, I can transmit FM on the 2 meter band using a third harmonic. The other thing we can see from the spectrum analyzer is that the output level is very low, just a few milliwatts. To turn this into a useful transmitter we need to add an amplifier. One advantage of having a separate output to control the envelope is that we can drive an efficient Class E amplifier using the RF output and modulate the power supply with the envelope signal. 
So, we've managed to generate good quality radio signal using a Pi Pico, but there's a bit more work to do before we can use this for real. In the next video I'm going to add a Class E power amplifier to boost the signal level, along with good quality output filter. Then we can see how well this works on the air. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.